All right. Um, good morning, good afternoon, <laughs> everyone, depending on where you find yourselves in the country. Um, we Thank you so much for dialing in uh, to this webinar on Erie, Pennsylvania, uh, a city comes together to unlock its potential through Opportunity Zones. Uh, my name is Katherine Lyons. I am the Manager of Policy and Coalitions here at Economic Innovation Group. Um, I'm joined by my colleague Rachel Riley, our Director of Impact Strategy uh, here at EIG. Um, just a couple of housekeeping notes at the top uh, of the hour here um, before we uh, kick it off uh, telling you a little bit more about what we do here and then um, ultimately we'll hand it over to our guest speaker, John Persinger, who is the CEO of the Erie Downtown Development Corporation. Um, so just a few things at the top. Uh, this meeting is being recorded. Uh, we will uh, circulate a recording um, and the slides uh, after the webinar, um, likely next week after the Labor Day holiday. Um, so look out for that uh, in the next week or so. Um, if you have a question, uh, we are accumulating questions throughout the call using the chat function. Um, if you are uh, dialed in using the Zoom platform uh, website, uh, so feel free to uh, type in your chats there and we will have a section for Q&A at the end of the call. Um, if you are dialing in uh, remotely or not at your computer, um, please uh, press star six to unmute um, at any point in the call uh, so you can ask a question. Um, although I should say we should, uh, we would like to kind of reserve our questions for the end during the Q&A section if possible. Um, I think those are all the housekeeping notes, um, so I will turn it over to Rachel to tell uh, uh, you all a little bit more about EIG and introduce John. Yeah, thanks so much, Catherine. So uh, just like Catherine, I want to welcome everyone to the latest installment of the Economic Innovation Group's webinar series. Uh, as a reminder, we're using these webinars as a chance to share stories and strategies from across the nation in order to highlight the ways in which Opportunity Zones as a policy is really living up to its true intent which uh, we feel is sparking communities to collaborate and attract new private investment in businesses and projects that will create inclusive economic growth. So if you're joining us for the first time, the Economic Innovation Group is a bipartisan policy think tank supporting data-driven approaches that empower investors and entrepreneurs to forge a more dynamic American economy. Since 2015, we've been leading efforts on Opportunity Zones, and today we are thrilled to have John Persinger from the Erie Downtown Development Corporation join us to share the latest from his hometown, including announcements made last week at Erie Homecoming, which I was able to attend, and uh, it was really a great week uh, full of events that um, really highlighted the momentum that was happening in the city. Um, before we get started, I do want to share just some updates from the Economic Innovation Group. Uh, and as a reminder, uh, our blog series and webinar series are posted on the website if you all want to use those as resources, just like this will be uh, within the coming week. Um, in addition to that, we have also, within the last month, updated our facts and figures sheet to um, have more information about what uh, we're seeing in Opportunity Zones as far as demographics, as far as just some areas of interest, you know, what types of businesses are located in Opportunity Zones. Uh, the number of hospitals that are in Opportunity Zones, as well as what the workforce looks like. So if that's of interest to you, highly recommend you head over that way. Um, we have some coverage from Erie Homecoming uh, over on our website as well. So I want to just say that all of these links that you're looking at right now will be accessible once we post this on the blog. However, if you want to hop over uh, after the webinar, it's simply eig.org. Um, so moving on, uh, in introducing John and the great work that EBDC is doing in Erie, I want to share a few quotes and pictures from last week that again I think really do capture the sense of optimism and momentum currently happening in Erie. And while you know Erie has really created this national model for how legacy cities can leverage opportunity zones to accelerate their economic growth strategy, the truth is that we are really seeing this uh, with other similarly positioned cities uh, where we're seeing those early adopters gaining traction uh, through local leadership as well. So really a, a general narrative and a theme that we're seeing is uh, cities that maybe have been dealing with some economic stagnation or managing decline in recent years or decades even are looking for opportunities to either 
pivot out of that situation or even just diversify their local economic base. A lot of these cities may have been one industry town. So for example, uh, Warren, Ohio, earlier this year, GM closed its Lordstown plant in, in March, so Q1. And great leaders like the folks over at Tech Belt Energy Innovation Center have really looked to Opportunity Zones as a way to spur bottom-up economic growth. Um, they are trying to figure out ways to leverage Opportunity Zone equity to support local startups, expand small businesses, and revitalize the built environment. I lovingly refer to it as the startups, the come-ups, and the unloved properties. Uh, we're also seeing it in Lafayette, Louisiana, where, again, another one industry town, uh, they have experienced some economic decline over recent years due to uh, the oil industry not being as robust down there. And so they have issued a prospectus uh, where they are looking to the Lafayette Public Innovation Alliance to take some leadership roles in uh, attracting new technologies, really transformative innovation technology companies that can help spur economic growth in Lafayette. And they have a lot of, you know, latent potential that just really needs to be tapped through capital investments. And uh, the last example I'll use, it's also a Pennsylvania example, is York, PA. So uh, in the news this week, there was uh, mention that there's a new innovation district in York, PA that had been planned. And the mayor of York, PA was quoted in a recent article saying that the original plan has now grown 3x, so by three times because of the interest from Opportunity Zone investors. And so it, this is really, I think, making the case, but for Opportunity Zones, a lot of these activities wouldn't be happening. A lot of this momentum wouldn't be happening. And it's the same story we're seeing in Erie. And so with that, John, would love to turn it over to you and talk about you know, what the state of Erie is, where you guys are coming from, and uh, where you guys are going. <laughs> and John, just a reminder, it's star six to unmute. Great, I think, I, can everyone hear me? Yes, yep. we're good. All right, perfect. So thank you for having me today. I am uh, CEO of the Erie Downtown Development Corporation. With the EDDC is just one in a group of many actors here on the ground in the Erie that's been working to revitalize the community. So I'm um, honored to speak on behalf of the community today, but it really is a team effort. And that's kind of where I wanted to start is just give you the background on Erie and how we got to this moment, because uh, it's, I think, important for others to know that there's, uh, there's been a lot of work leading up to this moment. Opportunities came on the scene and we were able to capitalize on it, but there's been a lot of background. For those that aren't aware, Erie is in the northwest corner of Pennsylvania. Um, we have, uh, we're like many post-industrial cities across the Midwest. We were once a manufacturing hub. Um, manufacturing has declined. Our economy is beginning to diversify and has been for a bit. We've got four universities, total 23,000 plus um, students, uh, including those at the largest medical school in the country, LECOM. We have um, a Fortune 500 company, Erie Insurance, which is our major employer headquartered downtown. We have a pretty diverse population. 16% of our population is African American. 20% are new American immigrant and refugees. Um, we apparently resettle the most number of refugees per capita in the country because the cost of living in Erie is much cheaper than uh, New York City or Los Angeles. But along with being a sort of a, what we think is a shining star here on the Great Lakes, we've also suffered through years of economic and population decline, as I mentioned, just like other Rust Belt cities. Um, today, that's resulted in, if you want to slip to the next side, a population that's gone from 140,000 in 1960 to 97,000 today. We had a housing stock that was built for 140,000, so we've got about 45,000 uh, homes, single family homes, 9,500 of which show signs of distress, 6,600 of which are vacant or abandoned. The poverty rate in the city of Erie is 26% um, for um, African Americans that hovers around 40% for um, children under the age 18 that hovers around 47%. 
We've had a school district that's been um, under watch by a state appointed financial administrator. And we have one of the highest property tax rates in the Commonwealth. Um, all ingredients to not exactly attract investment. And over the last sort of year and a half, um, we've gotten some worse news. If you want to switch to the next slide. In the fall of 2017, we were named the worst city in America for African Americans. In January 2018, we were identified as having the poorest zip code in America, 16501, which is our downtown zip code, which is where the EDDC working has a median income of $10,800. In the fall of 2018, we were ranked 513 and 515 uh, in terms of fastest growing cities. And the Urban Land Institute was here in December 2018 and identified our, our job growth rate as negative 4.6%. So as all these um, uh, locations around the country are going through economic booms, you can see here in Erie, um, it hasn't exactly been, um, from an economic standpoint, um, the most prosperous times. Despite all that, it's actually a pretty um, optimistic time in the community. And uh, I think you have to go back to 2016, um, if you want to go back to the previous slide, when Erie Refocus, the city's comprehensive plan was delivered. We had a um, consultant come in and do a comprehensive plan for the city. And he laid it pretty clear of what our problems were. And um, as mentioned, we are a post-industrial city. It's left, left us with a lot of blighted, vacant, abandoned, underutilized properties, especially in our downtown core. And um, this really shook the city up. It shook up the uh, economic leaders from both the private sector, the public sector, the philanthropic sector. And they were looking for a recommendation on how and where to imp begin implementing this plan. And the consultant said, look to the Cincinnati Center City Development Corporation. 3CDC, which has been doing revitalization work in the Over the Rhine neighborhood for about uh, 15, 20 years. So the CEO of Erie Insurance, which is our major employer, took a group of about eight other, uh, seven other CEOs and philanthropic leaders out to Cincinnati and came back with four lessons learned. If you want to go to the next slide, that is one, uh, you have to start in the core if you want to revitalize your community, you need a healthy, vibrant downtown. You can't have a downtown that's a sinking anchor. Two, you need to cluster your investments together to spur market confidence and momentum. Um, we've had a terrible job here. We've done a, had a terrible habit here in the past of where we get money in, whether it's private or public, of spreading it around to appease different political factions. And there's been, the market hasn't seen any momentum as a result. Three, you should form a nonprofit outside of government um, to go in and acquire and redevelop those blighted, vacant, underutilized buildings. Four, uh, and most importantly, you need private money to make all this happen. You have a very soft real estate market here in Erie. Um, you need private money to come in and serve as what we call transformational capital. This is capital that's gonna serve as patient capital. It's gonna loan on very friendly terms. It's going to be gap financing. If we can't get traditional financing, it will come in and fill out projects and it will be first at risk capital. So those three reasons are why we consider it transformational capital. The real estate market here in Erie, uh, again, is soft. A property will appraise for about 65% of what you pay to acquire and redevelop it. So again, going back to where do you find the gap to fill that remaining 35%? You need private money to make that happen. So our organization was formed in 2017, if you want to go to the next slide, to be that acquirer and redeveloper of properties. But I think more importantly, these um, founding um, organizations also created the Erie Downtown Equity Fund and raised just over $27 million to serve as that transformational capital. So as um, I was hired in March of 2018 to serve as CEO and brought on board a VP for finance and development and a VP for um, community engagement and social impact. 
as we were looking at the downtown landscape and thinking about how we were going to go about revitalizing it, we re quickly realized that 27 is an incredible amount of money, 27 million, but nowhere near what we need. We need 100 to 125 million to revitalize just a four block radius in downtown Erie. And so fortunately for us, opportunity zones were coming on the scene just as we were getting started. And we saw opportunity zones as a tool to basically turbocharge our development. So take what we were thinking, uh, again, estimating between 100 and 125 million. If we were gonna go a route of using traditional financial and economic development tools, we estimated it would take us 20 to 25 years to revitalize our downtown core. Thanks to opportunity zones, we are now looking at a timetable of about five years. So we are um, incredibly grateful for opportunity zones, not only from this economic perspective, but also from a, a social perspective. So opportunity zones have really galvanized the community. It's brought a lot of um, people together in the community to rally behind um, the redevelopment and revitalization of the community. When we were um, getting started, we sent a letter to the um, governor to petition um, that the uh, census tracts where we were working, one, three, and four, be designated as opportunity zones. We were fortunate that um, our mayor, who's a Democrat, and our state senator, who's a Republican, worked in a bipartisan manner with um, some other local actors on the ground to petition the governor to get eight Opportunity Zone tracks um, designated. As you can see from the slide, these are, for the most part, concentrated in the downtown. Most of them are contiguous. So this has helped not only our development, but other developments. And that was a very strategic move early on by reaching out to the governor's office to get these zones designated. We've heard stories from other states where it was kind of uh, zones were picked at random and without any local input and it's left local communities worse off. We are fortunate that I think this is just one, as I'll talk about many examples of where Erie's size and being a smaller city plays to its advantage. So the Democratic mayor and the Republican state senator get along and they're able to um, bring their staff together and bring other community actors together to make these decisions very quickly and to move very quickly. If you look at the next slide, if you look at our um, Opportunity Zones, they really embody what we think is the spirit behind the legislation. You can see that these are the populations in these zones are very diverse. They are also impoverished. Um, you can see the poverty rate, as I mentioned, 26 percent through the whole city, but 43 percent in the Opportunity Zones. Median household income just hovering over twenty three thousand um, dollars and unemployment, as you can see, Comparatively to other areas, it's a little bit higher. So while we were strategic in picking these zones, it was a large part due to there's great opportunity, there's great potential from a development perspective, but there's also people in these areas who really need help. One of the first things that the community did was um, release the nation's first municipal opportunity zone investment prospectus. So I was fortunate um, to get it invited to a conference hosted by Accelerator for America in June of 2018. And when I went to that conference, I heard um, uh, different cities talking about the investment prospectus, prospect, I'm not quite clear what the plural is, prospectuses that they were working on with EIG with Accelerator, with Bruce Katz of Drexel University's Lindy Institute for Urban Innovation, came back from that conference and thought that these investment prospectuses would be the good housekeeping seal of approval for cities. Our group meets monthly with the mayor, um, and the mayor, we came in and had our monthly meeting with him. Uh, 
And uh, I had mentioned that this is what I saw out in Los Angeles. This is what these cities are working on and suggested that this is the way that we go forward um, in terms of marketing the city. We were fortunate that the city had a business development officer, Brett Weiler, who took the lead and kind of ran with creating this investment prospectus and moved quickly enough to get it released as the first, nation's first municipal investment prospectus. And this really put us on a, what we think started to put us on a national scene. So there's an interesting story here out of that. Um, while Brett was working on this, community leaders got together and formed, let me, I'll save that thought for a second. You wanna to go to the next slide? Yeah, so um, actually, look, can we go forward and come back to that slide? Because this is good in the sequence. Yeah, so while Brett was working on this at the city, um, there were community leaders, uh, Chamber of Commerce, our elected officials, our community foundation. Our community foundation manages about $270 million in assets. So they've got a very robust role in the community um, with regards to funding different initiatives and transformational activities. So group got together and the chamber formed the flagship opportunity zone development company, which is the nation's first organization dedicated solely to promoting a municipal's uh, municipalities opportunity zones. There are different organizations that, as I mentioned, um, contributed to the formation, both from a idea standpoint um, and a funding standpoint to the creation of the development company. It is housed within the Chamber of Commerce. Um, it's a separate legal entity. The Chamber is the only sole member, though. Uh, there is one employee, as I mentioned, Brett Weiler, who did a great job in getting this investment perspectives out when he was at the city, rolled over into this new position with this newly created organization. The role of the um, flagship opportunity zone development company is to promote, develop, um, attract capital, um, and coordinate the different deal flows within our uh, eight opportunity zones. And while the EDDC is focused on real estate projects, we have others who are also focused on real estate projects and we have organizations and we have other organizations like the Erie Innovation District that are focused on operating companies. So the flagship opportunity zone development company works with all these different organizations to try and uh, promote projects and attract capital. If you want to take a slide, step a slide back to um, the slide with MasterCard, through this releasing of the nation's first uh, investment, municipal investment perspectives and through a recommendation of some others, the EDC got connected with MasterCard to pilot a data analytics program to track um, measure and assess the economic and societal impact of opportunity zone investments on a community in real time. So it's quite interesting work. As I mentioned at the beginning, we are operating in, um, if not the poorest, one of the poorest zip codes in America to be able to track in real time spending habits and other economic um, data is a great tool for us to turn around and show investors that they're not only getting a return, but they are also helping to move the needle positively in a community. So if you wanna go two slides forward now. The, so as part of the um, flagship opportunity zone development companies efforts to promote the uh, city of Erie's opportunity zones, they recently hosted Erie Homecoming 2019 in the past, the event had taken the approach of inviting expats back to talk about what they were doing in other locations. This year, the conference um, took on more of a investment conference approach. So the conference featured different mixed use development projects and technology startups that are housed in opportunity zones and that are um, shovel ready or investment ready. The event featured national speakers such as um, HUD Secretary Ben Carson, Scott Turner, who's the executive director of the White House uh, Council on Opportunity and Revitalization. It also featured um, folks from EIG, Bruce Katz, Accelerator for America. So 
so we were very, very fortunate and um, grateful to these national part partners to help showcase all the positive things that are going on in Erie right now. There were two specific announcements during the homecoming event that I wanted to point out. Erie Insurance, which as I mentioned, is our largest employer in a Fortune 500 company, announced that they had created a $50 million Opportunity Zone Fund. The first investment is in one of our projects, one of the EDDC projects, which I'll talk about in a second. And Erie, the Erie Innovation District um, and Capstone Impact Investments announced that they had raised a $10 million Opportunity Zone Fund. For a community of our size, these are really significant numbers. And these, as I mentioned, are going to help turn the needle in the community in a positive manner. So we're very fortunate, fortunate to have these actors stepping up and committing real money um, to real estate projects and to operating companies. Now, if you want to go to the next slide. So while um, opportunity zones are incentives for um, private investors, we as a community also realize the importance of having public investments. From the beginning, opportunity zones have been embraced on a local bipartisan manner. And we've been trying to figure out how we leverage all this private investment to attract public investment from a local um, uh, state and national standpoint. We've had several engagements with the White House Opportunity and Revitalization Council during last week's homecoming event. The executive director, Scott Turner, toured several projects in the community. Uh, at a state level, Dan Laughlin, who is our state senator, introduced legislation to make Pennsylvania conform with federal opportunity zone legislation. Um, he's, he's aware of the impact that opportunities can have on the community and um, as a way to double down on them in the community, introduced this legislation at the state level. And then the folks at the flagship opportunity zone development company who, again, Brett Weiler, who had worked on, was the lead author of the first investment prospectus, has, um, is working on version 2.0. And version 2.0 isn't, it's almost a anomaly to call it version 2.0 because it's, it's almost a different version altogether because it's not a few improvements over the first one, which was aimed at attracting uh, private investment. This version of the investment perspective is aimed solely at attracting um, public investments. So it outlines different projects in the city and what um, public grants or low interest loans might be available. And it's a tool that could be used by grant makers or low interest loan deliverers to lenders to um, showcase how they can um, mirror the state efforts and federal efforts with all the private investment. So that was um, given to the public officials who are at homecoming and I know will start to generate more attention as well. So that's kind of an overview of all the efforts that have been made as a community. I wanted to get into specifically how Opportunity Zones are helping us as an organization. I started to talk about this at the beginning. We were, when we were, um, uh, my colleagues and I um, brought into our new jobs, looking at it taking 20 to 25 years to revitalize our downtown core. The numbers weren't going to change. We were always looking at somewhere between 100, 125, 150, depending on contingencies. But the timing really um, was going to be uh, was going to take a while if we were going to use traditional economic development tools. As many of you know, certain programs like tax credit programs, they take a while to apply uh, and then sort through. What is so interesting about uh, Opportunity Zones from our perspective, it's not a program. It's not being distributed or overseen by some bureaucrat in Harrisburg or, or DC that's working on their timetable. It is 
making capital available when you need it. So again, we went from looking at some a project that was going to take us 20, 25 years to doing it in five. And we say this is our shock the market approach. We're trying to shock the market in downtown back to life. With our first project of this phase one, we have acquired 100,000 square feet on a block in downtown area. If you want to go to the next slide, this block called North Park Row oversees uh, Main Street, uh, State Street, which is our Main Street, and um, Perry Square, which is our main public park. If you go to any city in the world and you say you've got uh, real estate that overlooks your main public park, your central park, and you've got real estate that overlooks your main street, it would probably be some of the most valuable real estate in the entire community. For us, of these 100,000 uh, square feet that we acquired, 80,000 is vacant and has been vacant for years. Just another indication, a physical manifestation of the economic decline. So when we acquired it, we decided that we were going to turn it into a culinary arts district. We were going to bring in a public market to combat the USDA designated food hall. We're going to bring in a food hall. We're going to bring in eight um, new retail stores on the ground floor. And we're going to bring in between 110 and 125 new residential units on the upper floors. You see this slide shows a, a rendering of what it's going to be. This next slide here shows where the, the food hall is going to be located, where the, there's going to be a courtyard that connects the market, which is going to be on the west side. So we um, think this is going to have a tremendous impact for downtown. It's going to tackle so many of our issues that we're dealing with, um, revitalizing uh, uh, blighted historic buildings, creating new jobs and businesses, combating the USDA designated food desert, as I um, mentioned, we are tucked away here in the northwest corner of uh, Pennsylvania, right on the Great Lakes. And we get a little bit of snow each year. Uh, a couple of years ago, we got close to 200 inches. So we are also looking at this space as an indoor community asset where people can go all year round. Now, if you look at this slide, thanks to Opportunity Zones, which have turbocharged our investment, you can see the economic impact that um, this development is going to have. It's pretty easy to see the increase in um, valuation, the increase in businesses, the increase in employees and residential units. One thing that I want to point out specifically, we are paying $30,000, $37,000 a year in local property taxes to our city, our school district, and our county. Now, our city has a deficit of about $11 million on a budget of about $80 million. And as I mentioned in the beginning, our school district has been under financial watch by a state appointed administrator. After we do this investment, we're going to be paying between $700 and $850,000 in taxes. So this is going to be a huge shot in the arm financially for both uh, the school district, the city, and also the county. And that, I think, is a part of the Opportunity Zone strategy that hasn't really been told. But in communities like Erie, where their municipalities are, are reliant on local real estate taxes, this is going to help shore up the tax base. And since, if you go to the next slide, since we are a um, community organization, although we're private, um, we have a private board, our board is made up of community institutions and organizations. So we think not only about the economic impact, but the social impact as well. You can see it the ways we're trying to make a social impact by combating the USDA designated food desert, by creating new jobs and opportunities, uh, economic opportunities in the poorest zip code in America, by through reserving stalls in our market and food hall, um, going to showcase our rich diversity. And by creating more life in downtown, we're going to create a, a safer, more vibrant, more dense downtown. So that is, that's, the, that's the, the overview of what we've been doing as a community. And that um, North Park Road Culinary Arts District project gives you kind of a snapshot of how Opportunity Zones are helping us on a practical standpoint. I guess now we can turn it over to questions. 
Yeah, that's right. Thank you so much, uh, John, for walking us through uh, all of your great work um, and the kind of early fruits of your labor. Um, so it's really exciting uh, for us to see, um, and I know everyone who attended the Erie Homecoming last week was uh, equally just really impressed and excited by by your work um, and the future that uh, you know Erie holds. So. Um, so I have, uh, now is the time for Q&A. Um, I have not seen any chat questions come through. Um, so if anyone wants to um, ask a question of us or of John, um, please press star six to unmute. I have some questions. Oh, and Rachel has questions <laughs> to kick us off. Let's start with Rachel's questions I have, first. I we'll, have questions. We'll no. <laughs> no, I mean, um, honestly, like, there, there are some few points that I want to reemphasize that you made, John, because uh, I don't want them to to go. Uh, I want to underscore them, but but first, I also want to mention that as you were talking, I was going through the perspective, and there's a point that you made about collaboration that I think is also worth underscoring. And so I'm going to take just a few minutes, if I can, to per the perspective that you guys have issued name some of the community partners that, that are outlined in that document. So the Erie Community Foundation, Port Authority, Erie Insurance, Ben Franklin Technology Partners, Knox Law, Housing and Neighborhood Development Services, the Gaming Revenue Authority, Erie Innovation District, there's five universities including Gannon University, which has uh, an institute for uh, health and cyber knowledge, which is also referred to as IHAC, gotta love an acronym, mm -hmm. um, multiple local hospitals, the public schools, community centers, and many, many others. Um, and also in the prospectus, it's outlined that you guys really did look to the work of an organization who I look up to called Policy Link to inform your strategy for inclusive and equitable growth through opportunity zones and, and focused on how do you do development without displacement? How do you create healthy communities of opportunity? So in saying all that, um, it just seems like the city's been really intentional about engaging community leaders across the board on this. And um, from your seat, how important has that collaboration been in you know, first and foremost setting a vision and then doing the outreach, getting the national attention that you guys have received, and ultimately securing what has been a large amount of committed capital uh, for the city. It's been hugely important. And again, this is where uh, being a smaller city, I think, plays to our advantage because everyone knows everybody. And so it's easy to get everyone in the same room together. Um, I may have heard horror stories in other cities where they can't even decide who has to be in the room um, before they even get in the room. So here yeah. it's been, uh, here I think that's one uh, where it plays to our advantage. And everyone has kind of niche roles. We are focused on revitalizing um, blighted, vacant, abandoned, underutilized properties in our downtown core. The the uh, Erie Innovation District is focused on attracting um, high-tech startups and creating the digital infrastructure for the community. The flagship Opportunity Zone Development Company is, promoted, is tasked with promoting all the Opportunity Zones in the city. We all need each other. We can't, um, mm -hmm. we can't promote ourselves on a national level without the flagship Opportunity Zone uh, corralling all of the relevant stats we can't um we can't have uh we can turn around these buildings but unless we have these new startup companies housed in them they'll sit empty so we are really reliant on one another and um what's also interesting about this program is while it's pulled us together it's pulled us together because there's something for everyone as i mentioned yeah. um traditional uh, programs um, tr historically, economic development programs are usually targeted to a very niche audience. So historic tax credits are for those who are going to revitalize um, historic properties. Low-income housing tax credits are for those who are going to provide low-income housing tax, uh, low-income housing units. But what's great about Opportunity Zones is that 
we need it for our buildings. The innovation district needs it for startup companies. Um, it's really a program that fits for everyone. Yeah, I think that's perfect. And what illustrates that the best is, as you mentioned, uh, flagship opportunity zones website and the 14 projects on portfolio that anyone can go look at right now. And the way that you described it, where there's sort of you know these two offshoots of activities. So there's the real estate component, which you guys are leading on, but then there's also a business investment component that's happening as well through Erie Innovation District and that really exciting announcement uh, through their partnership with Capstone Impact Investments last week. So, um, which I think is another national model, right? Like Capstone Impact Investments is a national fund and they are partnering with a local partner in order to help support their investment activity in a city where they may not know uh, the footprint, they may not understand the dynamic of the community, but in working through partnerships with an organization, an entity that, that does and knows the local players and the assets, they're in a way managing risk and ensuring success. Correct, correct. That's great. Well, I just also want to say, I'm looking at these quotes that we shared earlier, uh, just in case folks didn't have a chance to read them. Your mayor says, I don't remember a time quite like this one with so many people coming together to transform the city. And then uh, Mike Batchelor, who heads the Erie Community Foundation, says that um, he's seen revitalization efforts come and go, but he's never been more optimistic about the future of the city. And so. I think it just speaks a lot to the leadership um, and and the sentiment that's happening right there in the community right now. I will say um, I have, we're fortunate that um, Erie Insurance has really stepped up. They are our only Fortune 500 company. For a long time, our major employer was GE, but GE was headquartered, um, GE Transportation was headquartered a few miles uh, west of the city or east of the city, excuse me. And uh, with Deere Insurance being right in the heart of downtown, it's their campus that's um, that's affected by all the development that's going to go on. But also they have a chairman who's an Erie native and a CEO who's an Erie native. So they've really doubled mm -hmm. down on um, um, investing in the community. Yeah, and ultimately it's, you know, what I heard at, at homecoming was that they're very much aware that investments in Erie have a direct impact on the, uh, you know, the livelihood of their employees and their ability to even attract and retain new employees. And so um, it's this sort of sense of, like you said, there's something in it for everyone and Opportunity Zones cre creates this great incentive for Erie Insurance to make those investments as, you know, straight double bottom line. But part of that double bottom line is having an impact on your hometown and being able to deliver uh, a net positive for those that are working for your company. Win-win. Correct. I'm glad you didn't disagree. <laughs> I feel like I'm making a lot of statements Those this question. Uh, yeah. Catherine, I don't know if we have any questions that are coming yeah, in. Yeah, we do. We have a few. So. Um, I'll just go ahead and read them off. Uh, first one, it should be easy. Um, is the version 2.0 investment perspective available online? Um, so is that on the EDDC website or John, where would they be able to find that? Um, if they go to, I don't know if it's up yet, but if they go to flagshipopportunityzone.com, it might be mm -hmm. up on there. If not, it will. I'm sure it will be up soon. Okay, great. Uh, and we can send that along, uh, assuming it is up um, in our follow-up note uh, with the recording of this webinar and the slides as well. Um, another question, uh, what was the basis for the projection of the increase in the property tax base from the 37,000 to the 707,000 projection? So that's for the, the North Park Culinary District. Sure, so our... Um our development costs for that block are going to be between 33 and 39 million dollars. As I mentioned, we have a very soft real estate market, so properties um, get assessed at about 65% of what you spend to acquire and redevelop. 
So you take that number and you get the uh, 21 to $25 million valuation. And then our property tax rate is um, 3.3683%. So you multiply 21 to 25 million by that percentage. And that's how you get 707,343 uh, to $842.75. Uh, Thanks. Um, and one more, uh, just a uh, follow up on the question related to um, the investment perspective 2.0. Um, Brett, who is uh, on the webinar, uh, said they'll be making announcement, public announcement about uh, that perspective 2.0 in the coming weeks, so stay tuned. Um, so, uh, what? Oh. Um, and then another one, what type I, of. Uh, oh, I was yeah. going to say, I think that's. I think that's reason for another EIG announcement. It's a rollout of investment perspective 2.0. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah, and I'm also glad that Brett's on the webinar. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I hope we represented well, Brett. <laughs> um, okay, a couple more questions uh, came through here. So, what type of investors invested into the Opportunity Fund, uh, and what was the investment pitch? Do you have a sense of that? So in terms of, um, I'm not quite sure what he's, uh, that person mentioned when they mentioned the Opportunity Fund. Now, Erie Insurance announced that it um, created its own $50 million Opportunity Zone Fund. So that is their own capital gains that they put into that fund. For our um, phase one shot the market approach, we've been talking to several funds and um, some have local connections, some don't. The pitch was um, you're able to make a return, but you're also able to help a community that's already helping itself. There are a lot of funds that proclaim to be social impact funds. Um, they wanted a return on their investment, which we're able to prove but they also want to be able to make an impact, a positive impact on a community. As I mentioned, we have a number of challenges here um, where we're not asking for just a uh, complete handout. We're investing our own money as a community and we're showing others that you, if you invest alongside of us, we'll be able to turn the needle pretty quickly, um, pretty rapidly and pretty significantly. Great. But I will say it's also been um, met with a lot of no's. So there is, um, for <laughs> anyone who's ever um, been involved in sales, there's no shortage of, um, of no's, of not taking your call, of hanging up. But uh, at the end of the day, all you need is one to say yes. And so while we've spent a lot of time and gotten a lot of rejections, um, we um, just needed two to say yes, and they have. Great. Capital raising builds resiliency. That's what I like to <laughs> I feel um, like I should be yeah, bringing my kids questions. to the office. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. A couple more questions. Uh, what I think you touched on, uh, so maybe you can, this is a good opportunity to expand on uh, it a little bit. Um, are, are there, is there any emphasis on building tech related companies as part of the project? Um, are you open to those who might want to invest in tech businesses and infrastructure? So maybe you could talk a little bit more about the Erie Innovation District and, that, um, and the work there. Sure. So to answer the second question pretty quickly, yes, we are open to all investment. So um, definitely follow up if you're interested <laughs> in investing. What, uh, so I, I'm with the Erie Downtown Development Corporation, and we're focused on revitalizing our vacant, abandoned, underutilized properties downtown. There is a Erie Innovation District, was, which was created a couple years ago as well, and its focus is on um, recruiting uh, high-tech startup companies and deploying the digital infrastructure here in the community. They recently announced at Erie Homecoming that they have formed a $10 million um, fund with Capstone Impact Investors to invest in startup technology businesses. So we as a community, I think this is, again, um, why I gave the background uh, in the beginning. There's two years of work informing the Innovation District, informing the EDDC, um, 
in getting new leadership um, in the mayor's office, at Air Insurance, at the chamber. There were several years of work which led us to this moment where we were able to, to capitalize on opportunity zones. And so um, I think that's why we're in, in the spotlight right now. Yeah, and one of the things that I just want to mention from the homecoming event was that um, Erie Innovation District had a session where a lot of the entrepreneurs did a pitch, and I was just really uh, happy that the majority of which were minority or woman-owned businesses or entrepreneurs, which I just think speaks to the level of diversity in Erie that at first blush you may not assume is there, but to some of the uh, points you made earlier, John, it's, it's a very diverse community, and um, and I think that that the fund that's being created through Area Innovation District is going to go a long way in supporting that. Absolutely. That's actually a great a great segue into the the next question, which is: uh, Are your minority and new American populations um, actively involved and engaged in your Opportunity Zones work? They are. There's and actually the. So um, Brett can speak more on this than I can because he's been more involved with them. But um, the um, Minority Urban Development Corporation um, has a business park in one of the census tracts, which they are um, looking to convert it's been basically abandoned for quite some time, but they're looking to convert it into some medical offices, some workforce training, um, some solar power um, energy usage. So they are engaged. Um, they, um, again, I don't want to speak for Brett, but um, they have been engaged with him. I know that in seeking out investors for these projects. They did give Scott Turner a tour of the project as well. Great. And Brett, if you're online and wanted to, to chime in, it's star six to unmute. All right, maybe he had to hop off. Yeah. Because so. we are coming to the end. So, yeah. so just one more. Um, uh, one more question. Uh, well, first of all, um, there's some questions related to contacts for um, you, John, and for also for the um, Innovation District folks. So um, maybe we can send around that information as well um, in our follow-up notes um, so that um, anyone who's on the call who may be interested uh, in the investment side of things can, uh, can connect with you all directly offline. Um, and then last question here. Um, is any of the Opportunity Zones investment going to workforce development um, or tech education initiatives uh, to create a local labor pool for these tech companies? Yes, I know the Innovation District is working on that. Um, from a tech perspective, um, I, uh, they're doing some work with the school district. Um, I know that they are starting a uh, eSports league to get uh, younger uh, folks into um, tech-related jobs. And so I know that they are um, they are working on that, and they have targeted efforts. From our standpoint, part of creating the commercial kitchen and the culinary incubator in the culinary arts district was to allow for some um, skills training for the support and creation of new um, food and beverage businesses. We know not everyone's going to go into the tech industry. So we want to make sure that we are doing our part to stimulate uh, the economy as well. Great. Excellent. Well, with that, we're running up against the, um, the 3 o'clock or uh, hour here on the East Coast. Um, so uh, I want to thank you, John, again for uh, coming on and spending some time with us this afternoon uh, presenting on your work. Um, as I mentioned at the top of the call, um, we will be uh, following up with a recording of this webinar, slides, um, and additional information, including perhaps contact information um, and where you can find uh, more information on this work if you're interested in engaging further. Um, just wanted to uh, do a quick plug for, uh, so EDDC is a member of the Opportunity Zones Coalition, which is a group that EIG runs. 
Um, it is a, a membership uh, organization um, that helps to implement opportunity zones across the country, um, more on the private sector side. Um, and so if you are interested in getting more information about that, um, please uh, email our info at eig.org account um, and we'd be happy to um, tell you a little bit more about our work there. Um, but with that, um, I just want to thank uh, everyone for joining us this afternoon. Um, again, thank you to um, the EDDC and uh, thank you for showing us kind of a, a model of Opportunity Zones and um, you know what, what we're excited for about the incentive and, and for its future. So, Thank you for having me. Yeah. Thank you all for and joining. Definitely and definitely feel free uh, to follow up with any questions. Yeah. Happy to answer Great. any questions. Wonderful. We'll make sure to send out your contact information as well. So, all right. Thanks, all. Thank you.